Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back, everybody. Now, I did that last time. We did this video already. Yeah, we did. And uh, we did it several hours ago. And then we saw that somebody had turned off the the sound mm -hmm. during it. Yes. Now, again, we get hacked all the time. There is no privacy in this world. No, there's not. And actually, we did test OBS and make sure it was running. But then as soon as we closed that window, that's when it shut down. So let's go back. It's still Yay! running. It looks like the microphone's still working. What it was is somebody, you know, deactivated the microphone mm -hmm. remotely, which again has happened to us before. Please uh, excuse the monkeys in the background. So there was an alleged active shooter in Hanford Nuclear Reservation, and it triggered an emergency. This is the largest nuclear waste dump in the U.S. <clears throat> yes, the largest nuclear waste dump in the U.S. Reports of an active assailant and a shooter. Now, this comes in. This is the latest. No evidence of shots fired. Well, you, know, you could see these reactors, this little map here. What's that all about? I know this came through and at first I thought, well, my gosh, somebody's having a bad day. But then it came through that this is a message. This is a message to somebody about something. So I have a feeling right now somebody's very, very nervous about um, facilities like this. Well, yeah, we've talked about these sleepy cellular units that are in place. Trojan horse again. Okay, and you guys can figure out what that is. Yeah. Just take out, take off the Y, you know. Take out the ULAR and what you're left with. Well, there's been so many people that have come over the border in the last several years. What we have gotten from the guides is that there's literally over 100,000 of these already prepositioned throughout the country. There's plenty. There's plenty to do whatever needs to be done whatever plans they have in store there's abundance of them yes and if you remember when russia well when the soviet union fell apart there were a lot of people that were really concerned with all sorts of different grade of nuke material that might be unaccounted for when things get moved and, you know, I only bring this up because we had a conversation with somebody that's in um, the alphabet soup, so to speak. Very, very much in the know. And, you know, just shared that. He said that was, after all, declassified. And that would be what would be concerning to him. Mm -hmm. You know, is, is you know, because there's, again, all sorts of crazy you know, people in this world, and there's a lot of animosity going on right now. There is, was, and, and a few months ago, I, I don't remember the name of the headline, but there was um, at least one truck, maybe two trucks, went missing with some. Yeah, mm -hmm. we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah some, some people had stolen. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, of course, everybody is wondering, we, we just got back from doing a shopping, and I was listening in on people's conversations just to hear what's the buzz and I didn't even really have to one lady uh, came and asked for me to get something off the top shelf for her and um, she just said what do you think about everything that's going on in Russia mm -hmm. oh my I th she she's she was like in her late 70s early 80s and she just said I'm just glad most of my life you know is past and and I had a great time in the 50s mm -hmm. is what she said um, she just was saying that she hopes it's not the end. And so, you know, again, we've always gotten that there really is no end per se. There's the end of a age. There's going to be the end of the Kali Yuga. But it's not an end of everything. There are certainly great resets. And that's that's a word that keeps gets gets you know spoken of often now yeah I, you know i think um saying the end of anything is just a story that m m man has made up absolutely even at the end of life it, it's not really the end of life it's it's the end of this vehicle but you know as soon as this door closes it's another door opening and our consciousness just shifts to another perspective so 
we've had also conversations with uh, some very, very tied in people when it comes to understanding supply chain woes and difficulties, uh, as well as the food supply. And I did want to share that it was interesting. Like last week when I went, the store looked as good as I've seen today. It looks as bad as I saw. And I think people are now stocking up. Even people that you know would never have thought of stocking up. Now people are starting to stock up. Right. You know, all this activity over there um, has gotten a lot of people to open their eyes. So in many, many ways, this is a blessing. I think this, this is going to open more people up to possibilities down the road. And we may have to supply Europe. Lawmakers pressure 46 to halt Russian oil imports and boost production. U.S. lawmakers across the aisle are pressur- pressuring Biden to halt U.S. imports of Russian oil and gas. And it pushing also for the expansion of domestic production. Interesting, too, uh, that how, how quickly things could change. Really, you know, it wasn't too long ago we, we became the number one producer and even an exporter, and, and already it's, it's changed. Everything changes so quickly. Uh, and, of course, Russia is sitting on a ton of, of natural reserves. But at the same time, you know, this is ancient technology that doesn't even have to be. Yet we, we've we never made, well, they've never let us know officially the type of technologies that are out there that are going to blow people's minds when they are revealed. And then we'll know, geez, you know, we could have switched over so long ago to methods that would be so friendly to everybody, you know, including the planet, and they never did. Well, it's because of control again, and, and as well as they seem to have this desire to constantly poison and pollute the environment. People are going to have a lot of questions when they have the understanding that, wow, energy is all around us. You know, it's any, any, anyone can attain this energy. You know, it's in the very air we breathe, and that's just around the corner, I feel. Absolutely. The market's starting to fail. Buyers balk at Russian oil purchases despite record discounts, sanctions, carve outs. You know, it, I even saw where they're talking about um, not allowing it, Russian athletes to compete in different events. This is this is just hitting every walk of life, obviously. And there is most definitely a, an ominous feeling out there, which is understandable. It's going to get intense as far as uh, I don't want to look at that one there. We'll talk about that on the uh, other channel. Um, it's going to get intense as far as supply chain, inflation. Look at what's already happened to the Russian economy. It's like, it's just incredible. You know, it, their their lifestyle, which wasn't the you know, highest one on the planet by any means. And, you know, the average life expectancy there is, I think, about 10 years less than many of the, uh, say, Scandinavian countries. It, it's already a little bit of a tough go. And now for the Russian people who, you know, again, most of the people don't want war. It's just really whatever you want to call the crazy leadership around the globe. I think that's something that's really important we need to keep circling back to because it sort of gives you an essence of where do we stand, you know, and people like you, people like myself and so many others out there, we stand in the place of peace. And I think we should just hold that, hold that energy, let that energy kind of permeate. But at the same time, we do need to know what's going on. Global commodity prices from metals to energy to food are seeing gains of the sort we usually see on an annual basis. And just this is just two months in. Yeah, it's going to skyrocket. It's a, it's a case of you're better to have tangible things than money, which can all of a sudden be just good for toilet paper. Yeah. And that's kind of like what's happening over in Russia right now. And it could happen anywhere in these times. We know they want to reset the total financial system. But think about it. What's been happening? Well, BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, you know, that began as an alternative. They were trying to create an alternative because 
again, we go back to 2005, we know the Chinese general made a statement that it's inevitable that they fight the U.S. and NATO. It's just, this is just inevitable. It's a matter of timing. And then we could, you know, see the works of our good friend David Devine over ADAPT uh, 2030. And whenever we get into these cycles, which have an awful lot of artificial flavoring in them, it, it just brings about the collapse of empires as well as wars because there is a scrambling for resources because, again, they don't want their own people coming and pulling them out of their thrones, so to speak, and dragging them off to the guillotines. You know, they, they don't want to see a French Revolution happen in, in the country that these leaders are in. Yet, Chaos is ensuing, absolutely, and, and we're going to see the inflation and the shortages. And so what we got also was that when it comes to uh, dairy and the cattle business, yeah. um, it's looking dire. It's looking dire. There's, there's just there's no uh, resources. And so they're just buying whatever resources they can at any price at this point. And so that when we get towards heading towards the fall, maybe even late um, summer, w you know, we might see an awful lot of reneging on being able to provide food for different outlets. And, you know, again, going into next winter, and I know that might sound like really far off, it, it could be a very, very cold, hungry world. It could be, you know, but that's exactly why we're doing what we're doing now. So many people are in the know and understanding and, you know, you might be sitting there thinking, my family never listens to me. Why should I try? Well, you're that be beacon of light. You are that anchor. You're the one who's going to be able to fill in the blanks. So just don't give up on them. Keep preparing. Just be ready so you can be there for them. Ukraine and Russia are vital to the global food supply, accounting for more than a quarter of global wheat trade, about a fifth of corn, 12% of all the calories traded globally. Is it any wonder that both sides of the coin, whether you're talking the NATO countries or the BRICS countries per se, uh, would like to control this area that has a lot of food? It, it's just an obvious you know, plus, yes, there are other things going on. You know, we had a conversation that, again, with somebody in the know um, that did verify that there are certain, um, let's see, how can we say, certain, certain labs that uh, no longer are that were definitely in, uh, you know, they had targets on them so to speak, and I hope I'm being cryptic enough, but yet you guys can perceive. Uh, so, you know, this this is a situation again, and I could tell, like, when you go down the pasta aisle, there's nothing there. There's nothing in the pasta aisle at, at all. And again, oil prices surge 11% to 106 a barrel, seven-year high. I, I saw uh, about 349 locally is what gas is going for around here. I don't know what it is in your area. $10 toothpaste, yeah, believe it or not, but I wouldn't recommend using Colgate Crest, any of these. You know, we make our own. I haven't used fluoride in probably 15 to 20 years at all. Um, and my teeth are doing better than they ever did when I was on fluoride. And we just basically use coconut oil, baking soda, and then some essential oils like peppermint and tea tree, and we'll add some cloves. Yes, that's so much better for you because these have like de actual detergents in them. So, you you know, even though you're spitting it out, you're still absorbing detergent. Yeah, and fluoride is a neurotoxin. Yeah. And yeah. so it could definitely calcify your pineal gland as well as probably slow down some of the receptors up there in your noggin. Yeah, it's definitely something that interrupts hormone receptors a lot. 37% is the approval rating. Record low. State of the Union tonight. Yeah, just a little little time away. And, you know, that's still heading south <laughs> pretty mm -hmm. fast. And this article does talk about, boy, if if we had true, mm -hmm, you know, a true process right now, it would be like a landslide of trying to get pretty much everybody that's in power out of power. Yeah. 
but we need to change the entirety of the system because again when you look at the lobbying there shouldn't even be lobbying it's it's just bribery it's just bribery you know, it's a nice word for bribes i know <laughs> it is a very nice word for bribes and so wastewater data sh sh shows early signs of a resurgence of the you know plague upon the land yeah so somebody is out there sampling and monitoring your wastewater. I know. I mean, who in the world does this and why are they doing it? Yeah, it's interesting. And, and that gets me thinking about all the medicines that get dumped into the toilet or put in the landfill. And then they break down over time and they make it back into the water supply. It's such a toxic, toxic world that we are in. And it's something that doesn't have to be. So on Friday, the CDC revised its, its Plague Upon the Land risk formula. And with this change, the pandemic abruptly eased, going from, you can see the red, 90% of the U.S. in high risk to now less than 30%. So all because of the way they just revised how they were looking at things. Oh, that says so much, does it not? And we have tens of thousands of Australians evacuated, hundreds missing, unprecedented flooding hitting the East Coast. New South Wales residents are bracing for these floods. And we do have family members, so let's send prayers out there for them as well as, of course, everybody over in Ukraine. It's, it's, um, this hasn't taken a break. The earth changes haven't taken a break. The plastering of the skies over our head haven't taking a break every single day we see this so you have over 300,000 people under evacuation warnings in place this is huge very huge and again this is all just impacting everything supply chain food supply of course you know people are losing their homes and so our uh, dear brother Joe thank you Joe for bringing this subject up to us when he was talking about uh he was just recently giving us condolences on on losing zeke and he had said boy i wish i wish i knew i would have told you to put him on wormwood because they did say he had a growth in his lungs but it was really his heart that failed um, but of course you know that definitely was something that caused labor wormwood yes wormwood is potentially extremely effective against tumors and cancer and you could use it on pets too be careful with dosage because you know in high doses this could be something that could cause problems but a lot of studies and this is something uh, it says here it's very little known to the public now we always have wormwood in the house and i use it basically anti-parasitic antiviral antifungal so kind of in a preventive way. When we were in New Mexico, we were worried about our water supply. So I was making sure to take wormwood every day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where you just can't go wrong. Just watch your dosage. Absolutely. And you see sweet wormwood is a powerful alternative to chemotherapy. A thousand times more effective and doesn't have those nasty side effects. And I just wanted to throw in there whenever you're using plant medicine, herbal remedies, don't take in any sugar preservatives because that blocks its ability to do what it needs to do in your body. Yes, and this can also inhibit dengue fever. And again, as we said, antiviral, antiparasitic. It's, it's something that would be definitely good to have around home in these times. And you can see here it's basis for a cancer-fighting pill. Dogs grieve the death of a loved one, too. And I would say, of course, mm -hmm. absolutely. But there was a study done uh, that actually showed it. And it was interesting, too, because uh, other stu studies, they found that birds and elephants um, do also grieve. But this gets you thinking about the soul. So in the Sanatana Dharma, which uh, most people would recognize as a philosophy from which uh, Hinduism has developed, it basically talks of transmigration of the soul. And so souls start out at a certain level and might just simply be an elemental being taking care of a single flower and then develop into 
you know, maybe having a life as a fish, as a, as a bird, as an animal, and then eventually as a human. And then humans keep evolving too. You know, all really with the illusion that we're separate, but none of us are really separate. We're still all very much, you know, together as one. Absolutely. And the soul just goes on and grows. And, on and, on. and so there's a mystery rocket that's going to crash into the moon in three days. China denies it's to blame. Uh, you know, not that it's going to do any damage at all, but according to astronomers, a, a rocket booster is going to hit the lunar surface on March 4th after spending about eight years tumbling through space. Lots of space junk up there. NASA is exploring ways to keep the International Space Station afloat without Russian help, as as statements have been made that, you know, if things deteriorate, then the ISS might come down. And many people have interpreted that to be the dwelling place in the heavens that comes down, you know, with a, a great fire from the Hopi prophecy, where that was to be the timing of WW3, according to the Hopi prophecy. Interesting. I know, and out of all the prophecies there are, the Hopi prophecy is the one that really sticks with me, and, and it just feels right, and I, I believe it wholeheartedly. Stronger muscles, longer life, lifting weights for just even 30 minutes a week lowers the risk of death from all causes. And, you know, in this toxic world, we should be exercising. That helps, you know, when you get your blood pumping, you're helping to get rid of all sorts of stuff. Well, <laughs> that yeah. you, you know. Not to mention your sanity. Well, you get to keep your sanity. Absolutely. Get those positive endorphins going because we could always use a little endorphin boost with the way the news has been lately. Mm -hmm. Um, and then especially if you, if you start getting a little bit older, over 35, you, you want to maintain muscle density and bone density too, you know, because over time that tends to deteriorate. If you don't use it, you lose it, but don't, um, forget as well to do the spiritual side of things, mind, body, breath work, pranayama, yoga, qigong, things like that. So. It's interesting to see. We've talked about the different yugas, the fact that we're going to be saying bye-bye to the Kali Yuga. And we've touched on this once or twice before, that there is also a Greek myth that's been given to us very similar. And in fact, when you listen to this Greek myth, which I want to say is d dated to like seven, yeah, 700 B.C., and again, we only have tiny fragments of anything um, that's even like 200 B.C. from the Abrahamic tradition. So these are the writings of Hesiod in 700 B.C. And listen to the stories. Now, they, have, they had a golden age, and that was before the time of Zeus. And we've gotten that Zeus is not a good guy. Mm -mm, no, he's very rigid. There's some real coldness going on there. Yeah, he's, he's got kind of an Anunnaki feeling to mm -hmm. him. He does. He really does. Absolutely. Well, the Golden Age was before the time of Zeus. His father, Cronus, which literally means time, again, reigned over the Golden Age when men lived amongst the gods and there were no rules because everybody did the right thing. It was always spring. Peace and harmony prevailed. Humans did not have to work hard to feed themselves. The earth provided food in abundance. They lived to a very old age, but with a youthful appearance, and eventually they died peacefully as if falling asleep. Their spirits were said to live on as guardians of the mortals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting, is it not? I mean, the echoes of these golden ages. And this speaks of a time before the world had its 23 and a half degree tilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just wanted to point out when it says it's always spring, that means the world is just in a constant state of growth. And isn't that beautiful? That's actually what I see when I, I look to look for other loved ones who are, you know, passed over. It, everything is in a state of growth. It's beautiful. Absolutely. And as we've said before, there's a tribe in Africa that says the moon was not always there. It was brought in by two warring brothers. Sound a lot like Enlo and Enki. And we also have the Etruscans, as well as others, that say the same thing. The moon was not always there. The moon is what really caused the tilt of the earth and gives us the seasons. 
And so, in the Silver Age, Zeus overthrew his father Cronus and ruled over the Silver Age and subsequent ages. So, the way I'm looking at this, when we're seeing Zeus, we're, we're talking about the ability of the dark controllers to influence our lives and to start to have an effect on us. As when we're, when we're in the Golden Age, we're in 5D, we're way above them. And they can't touch us there. And everything is fine. Then in the Silver Age, we start to drift down into 4D. Now, 4D is where we are when we sleep or when we pass on as well. And there's different areas of 4D. Lower 4D is where your, your hellish places are, really not nice places. But that's actually where the controllers truly live. That's their home territory. And that's where they want to invite everybody to go and spend, you know, <laughs> basically an, an eternity no thanks no thanks we'll pass we'll take the next ticket up to the to the golden age um but here they start to be able to exert effect on us as we go down through fourth density and you'll you'll notice that the beings that are called gods tend to be getting a little bit more warlike a little more aggressive not so peaceful until you know we we get farther on down to where we have basically the anunnaki with us and here this this states that Zeus created the silver race of man to be inferior in appearance and wisdom to the last. Mm. Yeah, yeah, inferior. Again, it's it's all about deactivating DNA, stopping kundalini, calcifying pineal gland, lowering the abilities of humans to perceive things other than, you know, what they can taste, touch, see and smell. Mm. Right, teach them that there's only just just these few senses, and that's your whole world. And raise raise children like that, and what do you got? <laughs> Absolutely. And so he divided the year into four seasons because you know the seasons came because of of the tilt of the earth and the wobbling. I do think there's a lot of markers out there, megalithic structures that are kind of trying to give us clues to all this as well. Man has to grow his own food and seek shelter, but still their childhoods were long and they could play for a hundred years before growing up. They lived only a short time as grown adults and spent most of their time in strife with one another due to their childish foolishness. Zeus destroyed this race for refusing to worship the gods. Uh-oh. Nonetheless, after death, the silver race became the blessed spirits of the underworld. So this is interesting as well, is it not? So again, you could see the, the takeover that comes. The, and the Bronze Age, Zeus created the first recognizable human bronze race from the hardwood of ash trees. War and violence was the purpose and passion of a bronze race. An odd detail about this race was they did not eat bread. Hesiod didn't say why. Their weapons, tools, and even their homes were forged of bronze this race of men was destroyed, destroyed by Zeus with a great flood. So we can see that they're equating Zeus with the God of the Bible. With the, again, the, Bi the Bible stories, they're again coming from common stories. The Sumerian stories are 1,200, 2,000 years older than in anything that's in the Bible. So, you know, you could obviously just basically start thinking that, you know, Zeus is denoting one of the Anunnaki's, and again, that's basically the God of the Bible again that, that did all these things. It's the same stories that are handed down. And when we talk about limiting man and we have 90% quote-unquote junk DNA, that's just been turned off. That's been turned off, but it's being turned on now by the real God, the real source, through the sun and and through all the energies that are coming in and and awakening us and they know this and this is why we have all the chaos and go get yourself some sun absolutely we we do that every single day so hesiod says that the nameless spirits of this destroyed bronze race dwelt in the dank house of hades a, ha a tiny handful of virtuous people survived as recounted in the tale of Deucalion, the ancient Greek Noah, in which he and his wife Pirha survived the flood by following the instructions of his father. In a story that's basically the same thing as the biblical Noah and the Sumerian uh, counterpart Utnapishtim in the Epic of uh, Gilgamesh. 
And again, you know, these are older documented stories that predate the biblical, because if you want to look at the oldest intact Old Testament we have, it's from 900 A.D. A.D. Absolutely. And then there's the heroic age, which again, Genesis 6 talks about the mighty men of old, the men of renown. Now that sounds positive. And then it talks about giants and, you know, the offspring of the giants. And then God sends a flood because he's ticked and he wants to wipe out the giant seed. Well, when you look to, if we go to the Vedic point of view, people in the golden age lived a hundred thousand years and also they were 30 feet tall 30 feet tall so they were much bigger who were the giants well many of our souls were probably the giants you know we do have this thing you know it's called our our dna our um ancestral dna and when we run into things that really really make us curious and perk our ears this is your DNA speaking to you and saying, okay, you remember that? Let's look into this again. That was fun. Yeah, that's right here. During the Hindu golden age, the Satya Yuga, people are said to be over 30 feet tall. They're totally virtuous and wise, and their lifespans are of 100,000 years. And, you know, again, our, our friend who's in the uh, alphabet soup agencies, he's got like four, 30, 40 years of experience in the know. And, you know, was quoting again, it's the victors that write the history. So when we're looking at the mainstream point of view, whether it's the mainstream religious point of view that's out there now, you're looking at their, their story that they're telling you. So, you know, the Iron Age is one of toil and misery. All manner of evils come into being during this age. And this is what we're just going to be leaving Piety and other virtues disappear, and most of the gods who's, who were still left on the earth abandoned it. I feel like it's also just, it's not even that they, it's like they, they couldn't hold that lower vibration. You know, the, the benevolent beings can't be here because they can't get here as far as lowering their vibration enough. Mm -hmm. Density does have a lot to do with it. Absolutely. You know, the real benevolent beings are up there in five and six and seventh and you know, those higher densities, they don't have it in them to do anything like what we see from the controllers. Right. I mean, there's a sense of harmony there that doesn't um, get disturbed the way it does where we're at now. So with each succeeding age, both the people and the earthly environment became increasingly corrupt, less beautiful, lifespans and statures shortened. Interesting stuff, is it not? It, it really puts things in perspective. Absolutely. So we want to thank you guys for your support on Patreon, also on Ko-Fi. We couldn't do it without you. Check out Medicinal Foods. Use coupon code EEA. Get a discount on the order. And also it does support the channel. And again, you can find stuff here that's going to boost your immune system, help you to detox and purify and cleanse your body. And still pretty tasty. Uh, as always, guys, be prepared out there. Much love. God bless and namaste. Namaste.